What's up you guys? Today I'm going to be taking you along with me while I vlog my first professional microneedling treatment. I'm going to Metamorphosis Spa and Laser Clinic here in Edmonton, Alberta. If that name sounds familiar to you, it is because that is the same place that I went for my chemical peel and my more affordable laser treatment last year. I'll link both of those videos down below in case you missed either of them. I'm extra excited because I actually have a discount to offer you guys this time. If you're in the area and you go to Metamorphosis and you mention my name, Sari Rihanna or Sari, or you just mentioned that you saw my videos, you will receive 10% off any service excluding cosmetic injections and laser treatments. However, if you book multiple laser sessions, you will still receive a discount on like a bundle package. So definitely check out Metamorphosis if you're in the Edmonton area. I'll have their website and all of their info in the description box down below and use me as your referral to save some money. They literally do it all, massages, waxing, nails, lashes, facials, any kind of service you're looking for. So I want to give a really quick little introduction to microneedling for those of you who may have no idea what I'm talking about. So microneedling is a treatment often used for hyperpigmentation and acne scarring and it literally involves creating tiny punctures in your skin with a set of microscopic needles. I know it sounds scary but I promise you it's not. Here's my simple explanation and understanding of how microneedling works. Basically you create that tiny little bit of damage on your skin and in turn your skin kind of kicks into overdrive and repairs itself faster which makes it a really effective treatment for scarring. It's basically just triggering your skin to speed up the healing process. It also does boost your collagen and elastin production so it's great for fine lines and plumping if you do have a more mature skin type. Of course we are focusing more on the scarring aspect of it for my skin and it also does kind of create a better pathway for absorption of all of your serums and treatments that you are using so afterwards it is a great time to load up on your vitamin C, your hyaluronic acid, all of your like restorative products because it's really just going to amplify the results. Before we go I just want to mention something super quickly. If you've been following me for literally years, then you may know that at one point I did use an at-home microneedling kit. And this is something I get questions about from time to time, like if I still use those products and I don't. After a while, I just really felt like it was something I should not be doing to my own skin. I did not know very much about microneedling at the time, and I'm by no means qualified to be performing those kind of treatments on myself and I was like I could be irreparably damaging my skin and I would have no idea so I just stopped completely and I know microneedling and derma rolling kits have become really popular lately I have found but I would highly recommend just booking a consultation and going to a reputable professional it's going to be more effective and hygienic because you do get a fresh set of needles every single time and you just don't need to worry about damaging your skin because you know you're going to be in good hands all right you guys I'm about to head out to metamorphosis I just wanted to show a quick before of my skin, of course. So this is what my skin is looking like. I just washed my face this morning with a gentle cleanser and I haven't applied anything so I am looking a little bit blotchy but as you can see I've had some recent breakouts in here and here and I definitely do have some scarring to work on at the moment but let's go head out. Um, this one is a 12 prong, yeah this is 12 prong micro needling needle so you can see the little okay. tiny needles in there mm -hmm. and they're all pre-packaged so then we just put these in our sharp retainers when we're done. We don't reuse them, we just throw them out and this is what's going to give you your actual treatment so this is what we'll start with for the needling so they're very small little tiny superficial needles yeah. and then you just change your depth as so how deep hmm. it comes in <laughs> this is a nano needle as you can see it looks like a little buffer okay so this is really good when you're done micro needling you go over the surface and you just kind of buff it more on like scarring pigment areas okay so it just helps give it a little bit more of an intense treatment hmm. so we're just cleansing with alcohol yeah just gonna remove any oils and stuff from the skin and just make sure the skin's really clean. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a topical numbing on. Now you can just do like sections of your face when you do microneedling. Okay. But honestly, you might as well do the full treatment so you're getting the full results everywhere and not yeah. just patchy. Is there a price difference? Um, we like can customize if somebody wants just like an area done mm -hmm. and then we kind of just do that in our consults but you're going to peel you're going to have maybe the swelling a little redness anyways yeah. so you might as well just do your whole face yeah it makes sense I've never had my face numbed oh really I'm really interested to see what this is like what it feels like <laughs> yeah you'll still be able to feel you just won't be able to feel like the little micro needles just won't be as intense yeah right? yeah so everybody's different with the numbing too like some people are like oh i can really feel that and some people are like 
meh. <laughs> and then as we do it, I'll kind of ask you on a scale from like one to 10, okay. how's this feeling? And then I can change my diameter, my depth that way as well. So I've just got the numbing cream on now and we're waiting at least 20 minutes for it to kind of kick in. And I'm definitely starting to feel it a little bit. So we're just wiping off the numbing cream first. I can definitely feel it now. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. I know. Because it's not like you can't, it's not a dentist where you can't move your face, it's yeah. just a topical. Yeah. But it definitely goes deep enough so it's not going to be painful. Because mm -hmm. um, we don't want somebody to be getting this done and be uncomfortable the whole time. That's not our yeah. goal. And then when we're done wiping this off, I'm just going to use like antibacterial soap. Okay. Just make sure that the skin is really clean. And then we'll go in and do the needling. Um, the biggest thing when we are doing this is every time um, we're doing a new thing or a new layer or moving to the buffer, you want to make sure the skin's always very clean. Mm -hmm. So we will be wiping with alcohol when we're done so there's no bacteria breeding. Okay, so just a little bit of the soap. I know with like the at-home microneedling kits, they usually come with like a vitamin C serum and things like that. Would you recommend using something like that after this or just keep the skincare routine really simple and gentle? You totally can, actually. Yeah. Um, it does depend on the client. Like if we were treating um, somebody that still had a little bit ongoing acne with scarring, mm -hmm. um, we would probably keep them still on like a very mild routine. Okay. For people, the biggest thing is, yeah, keeping it hydrated because you might peel, you might have some flakiness, so you want to make sure your skin is hydrated and not dehydrated mm -hmm. when we're going through all the steps and every day what it's going to look like. Mm -hmm. And then that is just going to help all of this heal better as well. So you would say it would be okay to use like yeah. a vitamin C serum? Yeah, after? vitamin C okay. or like a hydrating serum. Because it does help your products kind of penetrate better after you've had exactly. them in right? Exactly. So we just use a little serum for gliding. And then I'm just going to rub on this whole area. So what we're going to start with is I'm going to do this area. Mm -hmm. And then I'll do this area, and then I'm going to do here, and then I'm going to do here. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side, and then I'm going to do the nose, the lip, and the mouth. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I'm just going to pull your cheek this way a little bit. How's that on a 1 to 10? Probably like a 1. <laughs> okay. Maybe a 2. Yeah, I can barely feel it. So that's one pass. Okay. So we kind of go both directions. So you can see you're a little pink. Yep. Just no blood. Do you okay. find most people bleed a little bit or? Um, sometimes. Yeah, just depends. Yeah. Some clients do. Yeah, it feels totally fine. Yeah, it's pretty mild. Yeah. I have a pretty high pain tolerance too, but the numbing cream definitely kicked in. <laughs> so I'm just gonna turn my depth down a little bit and we're just gonna do it right under the thinner eye areas hey? exactly is that about as close as you can get to the eye or would you go like a little bit closer for more mature clients uh, more mature clients we'd probably do a little bit closer you have great tone so <laughs> you'll be great but yeah we'll just get a little bit closer their skin's a little thinner too mm -hmm. so you have to watch for that too yeah and then on a more mature client we would go through the brow and the top of the lid mm -hmm. and that actually will give them a little bit of a brow lid Lift. So interesting. Yeah, your skin's like so nice and tight. Yeah, you're nice and young, so you'll Still be good. Baby. Exactly. So for you, we're gonna work more on like your your Pigment scarring, yeah. yeah, pigment, kind of give you a nice even. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you might feel this one a little more. Still okay? Yeah, it's still about the same. Perfect. This, I guess, just can be a little irritating. Yeah. Like you can see, it's more on bone, so you got red quicker. Yeah. I get really, really red too from like anything, so. I do too. I'm, sure I'm very I'll be super sensitive. pink after. I'm excited to see like in this area here, because this is definitely where I've been breaking out the Your worst upper lip? over the past little while. Yeah, that seems to be like where I get my hormonal breakouts now. Hmm. Yes, a little bit in like the chin and jaw, but a lot on my upper lip, which is super annoying. <laughs> and then as you go through certain treatments, if we did a set of three or a set of six, then maybe you might start to feel it a little bit more, because okay. we'll do it a little more aggressively. Yeah. That makes sense. I think a lot yeah. of people are scared because they hear needle mm -hmm. and then they're like, oh my gosh. They're so tiny though. It's... What are you doing? But they're so small. Yeah. And yeah, you're not trying to go in like deep plunges into your skin. Mm -hmm. and it does sometimes take multiple treatments to get those results you're looking for. Mm -hmm. But we recommend people start in three to six 
can go from there because sometimes three you might get the results you want, sometimes six. If it's like deep melasma pigment, you're gonna get those better results. How often can you do them? Like how long do you have to wait in between treatments? Um, I think we usually try to do two to three weeks. Okay. Um, if so, it frequently. really depends on the client because if a client's really sensitive, then we might make you wait that month. Okay. Um, but basically, it just needs to be healed again, mm -hmm. and then you can come back in. Now it will help with pore size. So it would help with like blackheads and things like that too. Yeah. Then, hey? Exfoliation. Exactly. Most people do this for pigment mm -hmm. and for scarring. Like overall, you're not too red. Which yeah, is I'm good. honestly, I'm honestly surprised. I thought I would be. Beet red. <laughs> um, you might get a little pink later. Do you think we should do a peel today or you think we should wait still? We could do one. Yeah? You're not that red. I thought you'd be a little more red to be honest. I definitely thought I'd be more <laughs> red too. So I feel like you'll be okay. It'll just be a little more of an aggressive treatment. There's That's lots fine. of places that won't do two together. Okay. Um, so if people are wondering like, oh, they never did that for me, it just depends on the technician and how you were trained and mm -hmm. we do laser, we do skin treatments all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, so for us, we're usually comfortable as long as the client's okay with having a more aggressive yeah. result. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change it to the nano needle Okay. and we'll go over, um, just the areas that you have more pronounced pigment spots. Okay and we'll just nano it a little bit. And these ones, these, there's no pattern, you can just go right over. So we just did the microneedling portion of the treatment and now since my skin isn't too irritated or red, we're also going to follow up with a peel just to get kind of a more intense treatment. And so this one you said is stronger than the peel I did last time, right? These ones are stronger, yeah. Okay. Is this, is it still like a lactic acid peel or? Um, it's kind of like a mix. Okay. And you layer, so we are gonna do one and then we're gonna leave it for a few minutes, see how you feel, and then we're gonna do another layer. How's that feeling on a one to 10? Probably like a two still. Okay, awesome. Yeah, no irritation or anything. So this will just kind of help get better results in the end, but again, everybody's different. Consults are always free. Mm -hmm. So we highly recommend coming for a free consult so we can see your skin, maybe give the best diagnosis and best results that we think would be good for your skin. We're trying to explain it to clients is if you don't peel right away, it is normal. Okay. Because we did microneedling and a peel, you'll probably get some flakiness and some peel happening. I peeled a smidge on my first peel, but it was like spotty. So it was just more like flakiness here, yeah. a little peely here. It wasn't the entire face. Exactly. So it was just more like trying to keep hydrated. What you wanna do is you wanna get a little bit of that ash look on the skin. So where she has some scarring. Oh yeah. You can see how it's already like nice and ash pulling. Yeah, so I can that's see awesome. That. So this stuff's probably gonna peel all off. Awesome. <laughs> but yeah, so you want to look for that. You can kind of see on like a, a side glance that it's getting that ashy look. <laughs> That's what we kind of look for. And obviously the client, like if it's getting too hot, we'll take it off. Mm -hmm. But usually a few minutes you want to leave it on for. Taking <laughs> some water here and some sponges. And I did change my gloves in between. You weren't bleeding, but I just sometimes like to. Now you're a little pink. How's it feeling? Feels fine. Good, okay. Any stinging anywhere still? Uh, not really, no. Maybe like a little bit around my mouth and like chin, but it's pretty minor. And we always do like a two to three day follow up because in that probably third to fourth day, honestly, is when you'll start to peel. Mm -hmm. um, if you're more sensitive, you could peel faster. Okay. Just okay. a little bit of alcohol again. So this is also going to help with you peeling. Okay. Um, this is a Retina A, so it's 25%. You might feel a little sting with this. You might feel a little redness, but this is gonna increase the results better for you. Okay. Even if it's like evening and the sun's out, mm -hmm. you put that SPF on. Yeah. And then putting the little bit of the tint on is nice because then the clients don't, you know, they're not as red. Yeah. And this is mattifying, so it's not super heavy. We usually say like five, four to five hours after the treatment. Okay. Um, wash your face so the retinol is off, mm -hmm. and then you just want to finish with um, a hydrating cream. We always give samples to our clients, so mm -hmm. I'm going to give you some samples to take home. Perfect. Uh, so right now it's 3.15, so maybe around 7, 8 o'clock. Okay. See how it feels. If you feel like your skin is really warm still, mm -hmm. 6, 7, wash it off. Okay. And then just put on some nice hydrating cream or some sensitive skin cream, which I'll give you. Sounds I'll also good. give you some samples of a sensitive skin cream mask. 
mask. So if okay. you feel like tomorrow you're still pink, you're a little bit red. But I think the rest reacted really nicely. Yeah. You're not over pigmented. You're not over um, red. All of your scarring is more purple and red, which yeah. is awesome because it means it's going to pull. Awesome. Um, anything that we do, you want it to come up and come out. It has, okay. nowhere, it has nowhere to go but out, mm -hmm. so that's what we want. <laughs> so expect it to be not so pretty for the first few days, and then it'll start to tone down once you peel. Um, pigment could take, you know, a couple weeks to yeah. calm down, but just keep masking things like that at okay. home, and your texture will stay really nice as well. Awesome. Yeah, it, my skin looks really good like, yeah. already. Beautiful. Awesome. So it's been about five hours since I had my microneedling and my peel. This is what my skin is looking like. I feel like I am starting to get a little bit pink now. You can really see on this side of my face. But really, I was shocked by how little redness I had. And my skin has honestly been feeling fine. The numbness wore off after a little bit. And my skin just honestly feels like a little bit tight. Like, if I do that, like, it feels a little dry when you get, like, up close. You can see my skin is a little bit dry, so I'm really excited to wash my face and put on a nice layer of moisturizer. You guys know I already get super red when I wash my face, so I feel like when I do wash my face momentarily, that's when the redness is really going to start coming out, but I'm honestly shocked. Like, my skin tone has looked so even for most of the day after having this done, and I thought I would be, like, beet red. All right, day three update. I just got out of the shower, as you can obviously tell, so excuse that. I just wanted to film this before I put any moisturizer or anything on my face. So as I predicted on a Saturday evening after my microneedling treatment and my peel I washed my face and my skin did get more red it was only red for really like a few hours though and it just looked like I had a mild sunburn which is totally normal and yesterday my skin was feeling like a little bit tender around my mouth area but I didn't end up filming an update yesterday because there really wasn't much to show you guys but as you can see this morning I am starting to see some peeling around my mouth and chin area. I actually took a quick clip this morning because this area in particular was peeling like crazy when I woke up, so I'll insert that here. I feel like the treatment did bring a few small breakouts to the surface, like in here, these two little spots here. I also have one on my jaw here. But for the most part, my skin is looking really good and I'm really excited for this to really start peeling. Uh, we did end up doing a 50% peel. So I think the last peel I did at Metamorphosis was 30% and it was lactic acid. This one was 50% and a combination of acid. So it's definitely going to be a little bit more potent and that's why I am visibly getting flaky and peeling. And after care is pretty simple. It's just lots of SPF, avoiding products like acne treatments and retinols that could potentially dry out the skin, keeping the skin very hydrated to kind of minimize the peeling and also keeping everything really clean like sleeping on clean pillowcases. So I wanted to quickly show you guys the products that I am using this week. First off for my vitamin C serum I've been using the Sunday Riley CEO Rapid Flash Brightening Serum. The reason I am gravitating towards this over my other vitamin C serums is that this one actually feels more like a lightweight lotion like it's a little bit hydrating and my skin is feeling dry and then I've been using my Aven Moisturizer and pie rosehip oil. I spoke about this combination in a video recently and I love mixing these together. Rosehip oil is very like restorative and regenerative and just kind of healing for the skin. For SPF, I've just been using my Tatcha SPF 35 and then I have been using a couple masks as well. I've been using the Origins Drink Up Intensive. Every couple days, this is an overnight mask and it's really super nourishing. I just received this in the mail the other day and I thought it would be perfect. And then I've also been occasionally using the Summer Fridays Jet Lag Mask. This is like very slightly minty, so it's kind of cooling and depuffing and a little bit soothing as well. And it's just like a hydrating cream mask. So it has now been nine days. I had to think about that for a second. And you just saw some photos of my kind of progress throughout the week. As you saw, day four was kind of like the worst of my peeling. I really peeled right here in this area. And throughout the week, I also did experience a little bit of peeling kind of around the sides of my face and my cheekbone area and a little bit between my eyebrows and on my forehead. Megan said that because I do maintain my skin really well and I already exfoliate regularly that my peel might be a little bit more mild than it would be for some other people and that's kind of what I was expecting might happen. And you can see by day six that my tone was really starting to even out and my skin was starting to get that post chemical peel glow which is always so nice. The healing process and the kind of aftercare was a lot easier than I was expecting. The main thing was that my skin felt really dry and it honestly still feels drier than usual now. 
even though I was taking extra care to hydrate really well, I would still wake up in the morning and my skin would be like tight and parched. Honestly, the main thing I've noticed and the biggest result I've seen is how even my skin tone looks overall. Like, when does my skin ever look this even and like not blotchy or red when I'm not wearing any makeup. Literally never. I feel like this really eliminated any of that blotchiness that I still had left over from my cheeks from when I did have severe acne because while I didn't have any like super prominent pigmentation in this area, it was always just kind of like a little red and a little bit blotchy looking. And I feel like this area is so even now, which I am extremely pleased with because I feel like that's kind of my ultimate skincare goal now is just like a nice even radiant tone. It definitely worked extremely well on that very old pigmentation I have. And I think it has lightened the kind of fresher hyperpigmentation marks I have. They are still there, but keep in mind these were literally from like a week before my treatment, so they were very red still. So I would just say if most of your pigmentation or scarring is fresher than mine, then booking multiple treatments would probably be the way to go. Like I would probably need to go back if I really wanted to eliminate these spots in here. I'm really happy with my results for just one treatment and I would definitely go back for more rounds in the future, especially because it was so much easier than I was expecting. It was totally painless and my skin wasn't like bright red or peeling for a week after like I kind of expected. Though everyone's skin will react differently. Like I know people who have tried microneedling recently and they've literally been red for like three days after. And one thing I did forget to mention was that Megan told me that you should avoid wearing makeup for at least three to four days after, but most people won't want to wear makeup because your skin is going to be peeling and your makeup's just going to look nasty sitting over top of that. So I haven't worn makeup all week and I'll probably go as long as I can without wearing makeup because... Who needs makeup when your skin looks this even and glowy just naturally? Obviously though, in comparison to the laser treatment and the more mild chemical peel I did, there is going to be some more downtime. So just keep that in mind. If you are someone who does have to go to work or school every day, your skin might be looking kind of peely and red. But as always, share your feedback in the comments down below and let me know what you think of my results. Also, let me know if you would ever try microneedling and if there are any other kind of skin treatments you wanna see me try in the future and I will see what I can do. Now that I've done a couple chemical peels and my skin has reacted fairly well, I really wanna do like an extra strong peel that's really just gonna like peel my entire face off. Don't forget to check out the description box for more information on Metamorphosis Spot and Laser Clinic and book your free consultation with them if you're in the Edmonton area and mention my name or my videos for 10% off your service. As always, I hope you guys have found this video helpful and informative. Give it a thumbs up if you did and go follow me on social media. I'm at Sari Rianne on Twitter and Instagram and subscribe down below if you are new, but I will talk to you guys in my next one.